This is KGW News at Noon. The only crime that I have committed is to fearlessly defend our nation from those who seek to destroy it. Former President Donald Trump speaking to supporters in Florida just hours after pleading not guilty to 34 felony charges in a Manhattan courtroom. He'll the year on December 4th as the case against him proceeds. Hello everyone, I'm Brenda Braxton. Mr. Trump is accused of falsifying business records and each charge carries a maximum of four years in prison. NBC's Bree Jackson has reaction to this historic indictment. Following his historic arraignment in a New York courtroom, former President Trump returned to his Mar-a-Lago estate downplaying the criminal charges. Everybody said this is not really an indictment. There's nothing here. He railed against prosecutors. The criminal is the district attorney. The Manhattan DA's office hit Mr. Trump with 34 felony charges related to hush money payments surrounding the 2016 election. To make these payments, they set up shell companies and they made yet more false statements. Prosecutors laid out a broader picture during Tuesday's arraignment and what they called an unlawful plan to suppress negative information that could have affected Mr. Trump's 2016 presidential campaign. Trump pleaded not guilty and his legal team claimed there's no there there. Where are the underlying charges? I mean, the indictment actually did not list what these underlying charges are. This is just one legal issue the former president is dealing with. Two other investigations include efforts to overturn the Georgia 2020 election results and classify documents found at Mar-a-Lago. They could be more damaging. Fulton County is going to come next. That's a stronger case, followed by Jack Smith and Merrick Garland on mm -hmm. the strongest cases of all. There's also an inquiry into the former president's role in the January 6th attack at the U.S. Capitol. In Washington, Bree Jackson, NBC News. Now to some developing news this afternoon. Portland Fire confirming crews are on the scene here of a water rescue in South Portland. This is a live look from the boat ramp at Willamette Park. This call came in just after 11 o'clock this morning. There is some yellow crime tape blocking off this area. And you're looking here at a dark van with a boat trailer near the water, but we don't know yet how or if that's even connected to the rescue call. Earlier, Portland police were looking into the windows, kind of checking it out, but they have not officially released more information. We will keep you updated throughout the show as we learn more. High schoolers from Portland, Beaverton, and Tualatin are walking out of class over gun violence. This is part of a nationwide day of protest organized by the advocacy group Students Demand Action. Tim Gordon joins us live in downtown Portland today. And Tim, can you tell us more about what the kids are hoping to accomplish? Certainly can, Brenda, but first I want to explain we're outside of Lincoln High School because a contingent of students is just leaving school here now to go join that protest uh, against gun violence. You see them there with their signs and they're heading uh, down to Terry Shrunk Plaza where they'll join other students for a gathering there. And of course, what they want to do is make sure that people know that, the, that gun violence has become the leading cause of death for young people. And they want that to end, of course. Now, the shooting in Tennessee, really the catalyst for this latest effort to protest gun violence in America, that awful situation where three adults and three nine-year-old students were shot and killed at a private school. As you said, the, the national group Students Demand Action put out the call, and as you can see in our live picture, Portland area students are responding. And again, gathering at Terry Shrunk Plaza downtown to call out lawmakers, gun makers, the NRA and anyone that they feel stands in the way of real change when it comes to gun violence. In essence, they want to feel safe at school and you can see them uh, walking out now uh, for that message to get out uh, this afternoon here in Portland. Again, this is a national effort. We understand it is happening, uh, these walkouts at noon today uh, at other schools throughout the area. As you mentioned, Tualatin, and Westview High School as well out in Beaverton uh, walking out. Those are just a few that we know of. But again, many of them joining up at Terry Shrunk Plaza. Brenda, back to you. All right, Tim Gordon reporting live. Thank you.
Oregon's new voter-approved gun control law is still on hold and tied up in court, so state lawmakers are trying something new. It's Senate Bill 348, and they think it can stand up to legal challenges better than Measure 114 did. There are three main parts, raising the legal age to buy a gun, setting up a permit system, and banning high-capacity magazines. If this passes and anyone wants to challenge it, they will have to go through the Marion County Circuit Court. The bill sponsors obviously believe that the gun rights supporters who brought the, the Harney County litigation uh, had engaged in forum shopping, that they found a judge in a particular county that was going to be sympathetic uh, to their lawsuit. I do think, though, that uh, the selection of Marion County makes perfect sense precisely because it is the, the state cap. However, if the Senate bill passes, the Oregon Supreme Court will have the final say on any legal challenge to it, regardless of which county it comes from. Now to Washington, where Vancouver police are looking for the thieves who broke into a local store two different times this week. This is video of the burglary that happened early yesterday. You can see a sedan backing into the mini mart there on Northeast 164th before two people jump out and start ransacking the place. The owner says the same thing happened early Monday morning. He thinks the same people are behind both of these break ins. I'm so frustrated. I'm so stressed. Um, I have a four month old kid. I haven't slept in two nights because this happened you know, twice in, in two days. Um, you know, I, I just want to provide for my kid and things like this happen. We might have to sleep in the store and protect the store ourselves. You know, uh, maybe grab a base baseball bat and sleep with it. Maybe grab a weapon or, you know, do something about it. He estimates the thieves stole up to $20,000 worth of merchandise. He's asking anyone with information about the break-ins to contact Vancouver police. Okay, let's head back to the Weather Center now. Rod Hill is on spring break, so Chris McGinnis is here for us. And we had some sunshine out there this morning. It was fleeting because it's gone. <laughs> we had a beautiful sunrise over Mount Hood, but the clouds have moved in. And at last check now, we're up to 50 degrees at PDX. We'll probably inch another degree higher or two before the day is done. A uh, live look from our Chinook Winds Casino Resort camera in Lincoln City. Focused in on Cascade Head. The clouds a little thicker there. Hard to tell if we've got any mist there, but uh, Lincoln, or excuse me, Newport now reporting some light drizzle. So we're starting to see some radar returns along the Oregon coast uh, showing up at least here on uh, up near Astoria, a little farther south. Newport actually reporting uh, some drizzle at last check. And over the last three hours, you can see the band of rain that we are watching that will be overspreading the rest of the area as we uh, move into the afternoon. It's 46 right now in Hillsboro. Big picture across Western Oregon. We've thawed out a bit. We were down near the freezing mark this morning in Tillamook and Astoria. You're up to 48 and temperatures in the teens this morning have risen all the way up to 40 now in John Day and in the mid 30s in Burns. All right, the plan for the rest of the day here in Portland, 46 now. Clouds continue, excuse me, 50 now. Uh, and we probably hover right around 50 or 51 degrees with rain developing towards the afternoon, maybe tail end of the evening commute. Brenda, the rain that comes in this evening will be pretty light. Tomorrow, a little different story. It's a little heavier, a little breezier. We'll walk you through that in your 70 forecast. It's just a few. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you, Chris. Washington Governor Jay Inslee is touting what he calls a major step to protect abortion rights. He says the state bought three years worth of the abortion pill Mifepristone. Then the University of Washington added an extra year's worth to the state stockpile. All of this is in response to a Texas lawsuit that's trying to strip the abortion pill of FDA approval. Mifepristone is used in combination with another drug to end pregnancies through the first 10 weeks. Well, this next story starts with a video that a viewer sent us. He says he saw this boat on the Columbia River near Hayden Island, and it appeared to be trying to run over sea lions on purpose. Sea lions are protected under federal law, and it's illegal to harass, hunt, or kill them. The viewer who sent in the video says he's seen fishermen get frustrated when the sea lions get to the salmon first, but he calls this behavior over the top. I see both sides of it. I understand the frustrations. I understand this year's tough on salmon. Lower coast, I think, is even closed for a lot of people. Uh, but I think this was a sport fisherman who has just had a little chip on his shoulder. Um, and, you know, it's just, 
it was terrible to witness as a community here. The Oregon State Marine Board, the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office, and NOAA told KGW they are all aware of the video and they're investigating. Well, today is National Walking Day, and one man is taking that to the next level. He's walking all the way across the country. His name is Kendall Ray Edwards, and he's almost finished with his journey. He started in Jacksonville, Florida at the beginning of last year. We caught up with him yesterday when he passed through Troutdale. He says he's doing this to raise awareness about mental health. He has struggled with that personally, dealing with addiction, depression, and suicide attempts. As somebody that in the last 13 years, I've tried to take my life twice, I've overdosed numerous times, I've lost my heartbeat, I've been in county jail 11 times, prison twice. It hasn't been easy, but one thing I can say is that when it clicked in my head and I finally wanted it, Nothing stopped me from turning my life around. Edwards is on his way to Long Beach, Washington, where his walk will come to an end next week. When all is said and done, he'll have traveled through 13 states and walked more than 3,100 miles. Incredible story.